out how to solve this type of questions to get the answers. Okay, let's have a look. For the first equation, we have 2x squared minus 1 raised to the power of 5x plus 2. That's equal to the same base, but to the power of x squared plus 6. For this kind of equations, you can break this down into cases, such as when the bases are the same, the exponents have to be equal, right? And you can go from there. And you also have to consider what if we have 1 to a power? Well, that must be equal to 1 to any other power because 1 to anything is equal to 1. I actually did that. You guys can check out the link in the description. But in this video though, I would like to show you guys perhaps a small straightforward way. We can use logarithms. So have a look. I'm going to write this down again. 2x squared minus 1 raised to the power of 5x plus 2. That's equal to 2x squared minus 1 but raised to the power of x squared plus 6. I'm going to take the natural log on both sides. Because this way, it will allow us to bring the exponent to the front, likewise, this right here. So we will get 5x plus 2 times ln. Now we have to be extra careful. If I bring this to the front, this right here could be negative. When we do this, we will have to change this to an absolute value. Because if the inside was negative 1 to an even power, that would be a positive number. But once I have the power to the front, I cannot have negative 1 instead of the ln. The absolute value is needed, and then let's just continue like this. And then same thing for the right hand side, x squared plus 6 times ln absolute value, and then we have the 2x squared minus 1. Now we don't have like a variable base to a variable power, it's slightly easier. And uh, let's just put this to the right hand side and also factor out the ln. So when I do that, actually I'm going to bring this to the other side. So I'm going to have 0 here. And then I will just have x squared minus 5x and then 6 minus 2, which is plus 4. And then I'm factoring out this right here. I'll just put it at the end. So ln absolute value of 2x squared minus 1. Now, as you can see, we have a product of two things that's equal to 0. So set this equal to 0, set that equal to 0, right? Then let's just go ahead and do that. So when we have x squared minus 5x plus 4, it's equal to 0. We can factor this. We get x minus 1 x minus 4 is equal to 0. So for the first factor, x is equal to 1. For the second factor, x is equal to 4. As of the second part, ln absolute value of 2x squared minus 1. It's equal to 0. Be careful. Technically, I do e to this power, e to this power, they cancel. I still have the absolute value. Absolute value, 2x squared minus 1. It's equal to e to the 0 is 1. Then we are going to get rid of the absolute value, but put the plus or minus. So we have two cases to consider right here. The first case is 2x squared minus 1 is equal to positive 1, and the other one is 2x squared minus 1 is equal to negative 1. Now, for this right here, if you add 1 to both sides, divide it by 2 and take the square root, you will see that x has to be either positive 1 or negative 1. And for this one, if you just do the usual business, you will see that this part has to be 0. So that means x has to be equal to 0. And it's like, voila, there we have it. These are the answers, right? Even though we have the 1 right here and also 1 right here, but um, yeah, we don't need to write it down twice. So is this it? No. Be super, super careful because there's one number we also have to consider. And this is... I think the unfortunate part when you do the logarithm both sides because it might not make too much sense. When we have this expression, we will also have to consider if we have 0 to a positive power. This right here is equal to 0 to any other positive number. So I'll just say another positive number because 0 to a positive is just equal to 0. Likewise, 0 to the 17 is equal to 0 as well. 
Remember, we cannot have negative power slope because otherwise we will be dividing by zero and zero to zero, they has no agreement. So passing number, passing number. So that means we should also be considering this to be zero. Minus one is equal to the zero that I was saying right here. And so this zero here. Now solve this real quick. Put one to the other side divided by that x squared is equal to 1 over 2 and then take the square roots to both sides plus or minus x is equal to 1 or oh, plus or minus square root of 1 is 1 and then over square root of 2. Now be extra careful. If x is equal to negative 1 over square root of 2, if we put it in here, so I will just really make a note. 5 times negative 1 over square root of 2 and then plus 2. This right here, you can use a calculator or whatnot. It's actually less than 0. Okay, I will do it without a calculator. Have a look. I'm going to rationalize the denominator. This is negative 5. This is the same as square root of 2 over 2 and then plus 2. Yeah, And this right here is like negative 2.5 and then times square root of 2 plus 2. This right here is bigger than 1 times negative 2.5. It's of course bigger than, well, it's more negative than negative 2.5. And then add 2 to it, the whole thing will be negative. So that will violate 0 to uh, positive number. We don't want that. So we have to get rid of the negative right here. All right? So all in all, let's see how many answers do we have. First answer, 1, second answer, 4, and then right here, I'm just going to say x is equal to negative 1, because we count the 1 over there already, and then one more, and then lastly, I'll just say x is equal to 1 over square root of 2. So these are the five answers to that. This right here, though, you cannot really see it from this method, because if you set 0 inside of the ln, that's undefined. Yeah, so it's not, um, yeah, I don't know how you will interpret that, but you still have to break down into cases. That's all. I know there's another equation on the post, but I think you guys should try that one though. Go ahead and do that, and then leave a comment down below and let me know what the answers are.